Well, the death toll from the powerful earthquake that struck at the border between Turkey and Syria on Monday is now more than 11,000, and that number is still expected to rise. Right now, rescue workers and search teams are racing against the clock to find any survivors buried beneath the rubble of thousands of destroyed buildings that collapsed when the earthquake hit. Arwa Damon is with me now to discuss the rescue efforts there. She's a board president and co-founder of the International Network for Aid, Relief and Assistance. It's a nonprofit that provides access to life-altering medical and mental health care for children impacted by war. So this is the area, and I'm so yeah. happy that you are here. Um, let us first off talk about the immediate needs. What is your organization trying to sort of pull together? So the immediate needs are varying based on location to location. Mm -hmm. Inside Turkey, you have this massive relief effort. You have international rescue teams that are flooding in. You have all sorts of aid that's coming in by land, mm -hmm. sea, and air. That is not the situation inside rebel-held northwestern Syria. Mm -hmm. You don't have international rescue teams digging through the rubble there. You only have local teams. What they need in there immediately is things like diesel to run the heavy machinery. They need shelters. They need tents. They need basic humanitarian supplies. Mm -hmm. They're all out in the cold. Let's remember this is all happening at the same time that there's a massive snowstorm, freezing mm -hmm. temperatures. And you have a lot of issues with trying to get aid into northwestern Syria mm -hmm. because the Syrian government wants it to go through Damascus, but they're not really gonna hand over aid to a rebel-held area that they would quite frankly yeah. rather see killed and destroyed. Yeah, and you know, these are sort of immediate needs, um, but when you talk about Syria, you're talking about people who have been traumatized now, going th living through trauma for years. We don't talk about the Civil War anymore. It's still happening there. Tell me more about the relief efforts that your organization will be providing. So we're trying to put together a short-term rapid response. Yeah. We are not necessarily an emergency group. We play the long game. We mm -hmm. stay when the media spotlight moves away mm -hmm. and we deal with medical and mental health. Short term, though, we're partnering with organizations that are working inside northwestern Syria, trying to get them these shelters, trying to get them diesel uh, mm -hmm. to run their diggers. We're mm -hmm. also working in Turkey. That's where all of our beneficiaries live. That's where all of our staff is. They're all right now out in the cold mm -hmm. and they need things from, again, you know, tents, food, baby milk, you know, just anything that you could possibly think yeah. of at this stage. And then there's the long term plan. What do we assess to be some of the long-term issues that are going to emerge from this that maybe other organizations aren't focusing yeah. on? My gut tells me it's pediatric mental health. We know this from previous traumas. You have, again, different populations, right? Yeah. Turkish population, they are going to be traumatized, most of them for the first time, losing that sense of security that you're supposed to have in your home, in mm -hmm. your bed. The Syrian population, remember, there's a huge number of them that's inside Turkey right now living as refugees. They've mm -hmm. already had to flee war, compound trauma. Those inside Syria, compound trauma. Mm -hmm. This is gonna be something that we really need to focus on doing an early intervention for so that there are not long-term severe traumas that could have been avoided. Let me ask you, when you saw, when you heard about this earthquake and then this, there was a very strong aftershock, not too far, you, you I mean, you covered this, this stuff, so yeah. you know, people were in bed at the time, it's the middle of winter, aftershocks. And what I'm learning too is the structure of the buildings, which I didn't expect to be great in Syria, but even in Turkey, they've had issues. You know those buildings cannot withstand uh, earthquakes. What were you thinking? Which very, I mean, what building can really withstand the 7.8? Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's of such a magnitude. It's like this massive monster that just came through and smashed everything, mm -hmm. you know, in its way. And of course, you know, Turkey is well equipped to deal with these kinds of natural disasters. They have earthquakes all the time. They're on these mm -hmm. major fault lines. But at the same time, the space that this encompasses, I mean, it's far beyond any, any country's capacity. Yeah. And then take that to inside Syria, where you know the buildings are ramshackle; they 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 crumble like like dust yeah. at the same time. So it, it's it's so enormous that so many people are lacking the words to even begin to describe it. And you know, I'm been messaging you know with our staff, with other friends that I have there. I have friends that are messaging me saying, you know, my my friend is still under the rubble. No one knows where he is. Mm. I have staff that were messaging saying. 
you know, we're out in our car, but the building just collapsed and that's what woke us up in the middle of the night. Mm. I have, you know, other staff members, one who just barely got out with his children running out of the building as the walls are crumbling down around him saying that each time there's a tremor and an aftershock, which is still happening on a fairly regular basis yeah. right now, the kids start shaking again. We're reaching out to our beneficiaries, these children that have already been injured by war, families that are already traumatized. And they're saying that their kids are refusing to go indoors right now. Oh. Indoors has and become scary. And outdoors, we know, is also life-threatening because it's just so so cold so out cold. there. Uh, Awar uh, Damon, thank you so much for coming thank here you. today. Thank you.